Okay, uh, looks like we're all set to go. And I'm over here in the announcements uh, for this course. The uh, class session for the 24th I, is going to be pre-recorded. I have uh, some appointments I need to get to for medical stuff and for insurance, and it's just going to be impossible for me to get there. But the good news is, is that I can uh, record the, the class session and have it there ready for you so that you won't miss anything. Now, I want to take just a couple of minutes, if I could, and make sure, and I want to talk about where we are in the course, what's going on, okay? And uh, I'm making, I'm recording this during your break. So I hope you're having a good uh, fall free days. And week nine, we'll open this up because it's 1024, 1026. And we have a kind of a change of pace. All right. Um, the, I've got some online, I've got some resources for you as well. I have, in addition, I have some working that I had done a little bit with uh, Lunch's Database 15 and 16. And then I've got some links to some Zoom recordings that I had done with them. And then Lunch Database uh, 15 Part 2 and then a uh, Zoom recording. That, disregard that. But this, this, this stuff is resources for you to take a look at, okay? And so I think you'll want to take a look at these. Um, and, uh, you know, and I probably during the class session will pop out the bees. But, you know, basically what we're going to do here is we're going to take it. We're going to take a look at lunch's database uh, number uh, 17. Now, you also uh, have and I'll take that I'll unpublish that agenda because that's not of any use. OK. And uh, let's come down here. And um, these are some from a prior class. I'm going to unpublish this because we've already done those. And I'm going to unpublish this. This is just stuff from a prior class that I imported in. And ditto here. And ditto here. Well, that is unpublished. So I've unpublished several of these that you'll see. Um, yeah, I'll publish this as well. So those are those are all unpublished stuff. I have some resources for you that we'll talk about. Um, and this is uh, there's some. If you look back at Lunch's Database 16 and you do 1611 over on page 619, here's some code if you just wanted to see it and mess around with it. Okay, so just kind of resource. And then I have several resources here for you, you know, that we'll, we'll also talk about those on Thursday. But this is, uh, this is a pre recorded session. Now, I want to also visit with you real quickly about the assignment here. Uh, BI number one, page 23. Now we're going to start to move into assignments, okay, in the business intelligence text. Now you say, which one is that? And that's the turban text, turban, uh, Sharda, uh, dealing and king. It's that big brown one, okay? And you're going to have an assignment, and you have an assignment over there. It's due uh, the 26th, and it's over on page 25, okay? And it's 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 uh, it's page twenty five, and the ter this text is also known as text three. And I want you to do business intelligence exercise number one, okay? And this is the one that deals with um, and I'm going to edit it here. Um, So there's real clarity about what we're going to do. And this is exercise number one. I'll just make that clear. At the bottom, uh,
And that's at the bottom of page uh, 25. I believe the student password for Teradata University. And I'm, let's just go find out what that password is. And I'm going to go to Teradata University. University Network. And we'll go over there for just a second. I'm going to sign in with my data. And I think I'm good to go. Okay. And the student access password is analytics, as I showed. The uh, Okay, student password is uh, analytics. And what I want you to do is to just go over there, okay, and take a look around. And in, in fact, number not on number one, it says use the registry to provide log on, learn the content of the site, prepare a list of all materials. So, this is the exercise number one at the bottom, page 25. The student password for Teradata University is analytics. And I just want you to go there and find out what all, what all is over there. You'll, you'll be, there's some really good stuff over there, okay? And that's a 20 point assignment. And so I'm going to save this. It's due 6 p.m. the 26th, okay? So that's. We'll go back to the modules now, and that should give you some better explanation of what's due. And then we're also, uh, you know, a lot of this work we've pre-recorded, obviously, and uh, you've already uploaded, but this, this one seems to kind of throw people. All right, now, today, uh, and if you choose to do 1611, there's code there that you can use. I'm gonna open this up for just a minute, let you take a look at it. This is a text file, okay? And this is from 1611, and this is over in the Patrick's text. Now you don't have to do this, okay? But I've got it there for your, for your edification. Uh, and because 16 had some kind of, well, challenging pieces here or there. So I'm gonna go back over to 1611. This is the Patrick text, all right? And we've done, the, and in that page six, pardon me, in chapter 16, we had done cross joins. And 1611, we, and we covered pivot tables and all that business. And 1611, uh, that's over on page 619, okay? And I just simply uh, corrected the code and how it should read so it works. That's all, that's all that is. You don't have to do it, but I want to let you see that so you can see and then compare it with the text, okay? The, the things like, if you look at the text page 619, you're gonna see it says to character, those functions don't use access, okay? Uh, so it's just a uh, time done, and then we had the hour and the minute as the start time, and then also uh, I instead of instead of just embedding in parentheses, okay, the operation, all right, 
I had to round the operation. It's this third line. We rounded it. Time done minus time done times 60 times 24, okay? And then we identify the tables and where the sequence number begins plus one and we are. So that's just, I want to show you um, because the code in his text file just simply is not correct. All right, so I wanted to show you that piece. So we should be clear right now about what to do for that business intelligence, uh, that business intelligence assignment and it'll get you acquainted with um, it'll get you acquainted with uh, with Teradata University Network. All right. So I'm going to close that off there. All right. And we'll go back here, and as I mentioned, I have some resources for you to look at. And we'll look at these, and we'll talk about them a little bit. I'll probably add some in for our Thursday class session. The online session. Uh, no, this is a virtual Tuesday. So yeah, well, the, the physical class session, but I'm pre-recording this again, and I've noted this, and I sent you an email, if I'm not mistaken, saying this is pre-recorded, okay? So don't expect a live screencast. You won't uh, that. I'm, I've got, as I mentioned, I got a lot of stuff going on Tuesday, and I, this is just the best way for me to do it. All right, so we've covered all of that. We know what we got going on. Let's see what's gonna be happening next week, okay? Next week is another one of these from the business intelligence text, and uh, and that's over on page seventy five. And I'll talk about that. That's in the the, the, the uh, turban text, and we'll go to page seventy five. All right, and you're going to see at the bottom of page seventy five exercises. Okay, and I want you to do number five. And I'll just go ahead and edit this so, so it's really clear about what's going on. Okay. And uh, uh, do the uh, exercise number five at the bottom of page 75. in the BI text, okay? So do exercise number five, and you'll notice it's got a, a case about Harris pie, high payoff and their use of analytics, okay? So that, I've got that clarified for you. All right, number five, and I'm gonna save that. All right, and let's go back. And we'll go back to the uh, modules. And so as you can see, I'm getting you acquainted with all the resources that are there at uh, Teradata University. Let's see if this will get me back to the modules. Okay. So doing a little housekeeping here as we kind of work through this. And, that's the assignment uh, I clarified for you. On, this is assignment on the 31st that I clarified for you. Okay, now here's another internet exercise number seven, page 125. Okay, again, this is the term, uh, the uh, business intelligence textbook, that's T3. And we'll go over to page 125, okay. And you see in the internet exercises, labeled such, number seven on page 125. So it's internet exercise number seven, page 125. You can upload it. All right. Then I have some resources here that we'll take a look at. So that kind of gets us going. And uh, then, then, as we move into November, we start to look at the, the uh, check your understanding exercises. And uh, then on November, this assignment on November 9th, and I will go over there. 
okay, to page 182. And you'll see questions for discussion. And that's what I want you to do is, is, is BI number two. Actually, I think I'm going to clarify this a little bit because I've looked got some up here. Yeah, do not. Yeah, do number two in question for discussion. Okay, so I've got that uh, clarified for you. And let's scroll down some more because I know as we kind of switch gears that you can get a little bit confused. And then, um, then internet exercise number nine is over on page two twenty eight from the business intelligence text. I've got that for you. And we'll see that. Um, page 228, exercise number nine is right at the top and it's the one that deals with kdnuggets.com, kdnuggets.com just to make sure I'll edit this uh, Katie Nuggets Dot com top of page two twenty eight. Okay, I'll get that straight out, and this will clarify some things. I need to do this anyway. I want to take some time to kind of make sure we're okay. This business intelligence text is very, very, very uh, useful and will help you and will help you put a lot of things in the class into a practical context, into a practical context. And I focus so much on this because this is what you're going to, this is the, this is what you'll be dealing with is you'll be dealing with, um, uh, Da uh, bit, uh, dashboards, uh, which are the which are the end result of a business intelligence approach. Okay, well, we've talked a lot about that. Um, so we've got that clarified, and you know where you should be uploading ahead of and uh, ahead of everything. And then let's take a look at week thirteen. Now that's the twenty first. We'll take a look at it. What's going on that week? This is flex time. If you've had a class with me before, you know at the end of the semester, I end up with, I, I give you some fairly extensive hands on uh, work. And uh, you can, uh, I give you flex time. You could work on the check your understandings one through nine or the Oracle assignment if you select it as an alternative. The SAS project, we have a SAS visual analytics project. That's why I've been getting you acquainted with uh, Teradata University because SAS visual analytics is over there. Then final exam, part A and part B, those are self-explanatory. So we, if you've had a class with me, you know that as we get near the end, I start to give you uh, a few weeks prior to the final exam uh, projects and, and parts of the final exam you can do prior to, that are due prior to the start. Of the final exam. Well, I think I've done enough of that explaining, you know, what's going on and so forth. So you should be lined out pretty well. So I'm going to go back over to the modules now. Okay. 
And uh, again, we're here on, this is uh, the screencast for October 24th. As I mentioned, Tuesday, October, as I mentioned, I will, you know, there won't be a live screencast, but this is being pre-recorded and will be posted in the announcements. And we're gonna work on uh, Patrick text, on the Patrick text uh, chap, uh, lunches database 17, if I'm not mistaken, because I think we've worked on 16. Okay, I'll look at the uh, announcements up here real quick. Yeah, uh, we covered LD16 on the 17th, and now on the 24th, on the 24th which is the, this pre-recorded uh, uh, screencast, I'm going to cover Lunch's Database 17. All right, so we're lying down a lot of, uh, a lot of um, logistical and housekeeping pieces and that type of thing. Okay. And we're going to go over to, Pat, to uh, the Patrick text. And this, of course, is on page, uh, this is Lunch's Database 17. And it starts on page 653. And it's combining tables in a production database. Okay, so let's go over to page 653 for just a second. Okay. And I alluded to this just, just a little bit, not a whole lot. But you know, we've, we've started, we've built to the point now where we're manip we are manipulating tables. We've done unions, cross joins, self joins, and, and, and that's, that's moved us to, and then we did the cross tabulations where we really start to build that analytical cube. As I mentioned to you before, uh, what you're going to find often is that it will be a lot easier for you uh, to, to, if you're, it, it, if you're using a product, say for example, like SAS Visual Analytics or Oracle or SAP or any of those products that are out there, it, the cross tabulation, you'll do it and you won't even know you're doing it. But if, if worse comes to worse and you, have, and you have just a database to work with, then I do want you to ha know how to take the data of whatever you get from the query, dump it into Excel and use a, power, and use a pivot table, which you've done. We did that in 1123. We're doing it in this class, okay, uh, which is uh, BISS 4403. Uh, it, if you take the management science course with me, we use a pivot, do we use pivot tables in there as well? As I've said to you, pivot table, except for the optimizing tool in Excel, is the most powerful uh, tool you have because it lets you build and look at that analytic cube in a very intuitive uh, environment. Well, we'll go over here to pay, we'll go over to, uh, to, to chapter 17, okay? And this is, this is combining tables in a production database. So, and so now we, we've, we've, we've really come to a whole different level in, in terms of, of what, we're, what we're working with. Now, if you take a look over at page 653, uh, the author talks about um, uh, chapters 17 and 18. Now, 19 is a, is a multi-user environment, okay? And we're not gonna do anything with that because that really is the realm of folks over in computer science. And it won't kill you, you know, to, do, to, to, uh, to look at it and learn a little bit about it. Then uh, chapter 20 talks about uh, SQL and what it attempts to do. So those two chapters are worth reading and looking over, but we will not have, uh, you won't have any uploads, I don't believe you will. Let me check the syllabus real quick to see if I planned on having you do any uploads for 18 and 19. I don't think I do. Oh, we do, okay. LD 17 and 18, all right, we stop at 18. Yeah, because the 18, we're gonna do the if then else functions. All right, that makes sense. Okie dokie, now let's go over to the files, okay? And we're gonna do a familiar thing. We're gonna go here and we're gonna find the Patrick. Okay. And we'll find the Patrick zip file and we wanna download it, okay? And there it is. Now I'm gonna diminish my screen down to my nasty desktop. And oh my lord, it's nasty. Now I have it. Now I'm gonna take SQL Fun 2007. I'm gonna put it down there. 
and I'll copy and replace it. Okay, and there it is. And then I'm gonna open up the access code and I'm gonna take chapter 17 and I'm gonna put it on my desktop. And there it is. Now we're ready to go. And they talked about combining tables in a production database. So I'm gonna go ahead, all right, and I'm gonna open up this file. This is chapter 17, I'm gonna keep it over here. Then I'm gonna open up uh, our database. And after you, what you probably wanna do is once you've downloaded this SQL fund to your data, to your desktop, you, you can rename it to LD17, okay? And we'll open it up, all right? And we're gonna close this off from it and diminish it. There's Cardinal Buddy hidden by file after file after file. I need to clean it up, I know it's nasty looking. Now, let's talk about this notion of a production database, what in the world are they talking about? Well, a production sized database, okay, is called that because it utilizes a tremendous number of fact tables. In fact, in, in truth, it may be all nothing but fact tables. Now, just for our own application, Okay, I'm gonna do a real quick Google search on production. Uh, production uh, database. Okay, a database is used in the daily processing of transactions. Production system data. Now, now you know it, now you recall briefly, I said to you, okay, this is, we, we're gonna be seeing a lot of, you would be working with a lot of really large tables, and they're going to be fact tables, okay? And um, that's, as they mentioned here, the daily processing of transactions, all right? Now, here's a nice definition from PC Magazine Encyclopedia, and it's daily, daily processing transactions. Okay, now let's talk about that for just a moment. You say, what do you mean by transactions? Okay, transactions could be, will include, somebody buys something, or, or you sell it to them. Somebody returns something. They bought it, but they didn't like it. Okay, so you get a return. Uh, you may do some type of, of, of offer to see how, to, you may run a, a price reduction or some type of offer and, and, and people respond, okay? You may be keeping track of, of employees as they, you know, as, they, as they clock in or clock out or, or, they're, or, they, or as they you know, indicate their hours worked. This may be the number of stuff that gets that, that's inbound in inventory, inbound inventory. This may be stuff that's that's uh, outbound inventory. This may be uh, any one of a number of things, a transaction. Now, when we talk about a transaction, okay, we we're talking about something that occurs within a company between one or more units. Or we're talking about a transaction and interaction that occurs between the company and one of its major share uh, stakeholders. So you can also have a production database, okay, that you produce for a regulatory agency. And you recall, if you took uh, 11 BISS 1123 with me, we did that database case where you worked with. Um, you worked with the, the pharmacy, and they had the drugs that were being tracked by the government. Okay, same story there. So that's what's going on. So we're so we're we're really at this point. Okay, we are we're working in 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 basically in harvest mode, if you will, and we're pulling. Uh, we're 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 working with tables 
and we're working with various types of, of, of production tables. Okay, and, and that's really what we're going to be doing. So we're going to work through this. All right, and what you'll see is it's you know it, there's there's nothing in there that's really terribly terribly complex. Now, th now the over on page six fifty five. The author talks about, you know, production tables, okay? And he talks about joining several, and at the bottom of page 65, he talks about joining several tables in a series of steps. When we join these, when we join several tables, that's where we start to really see and to understand this idea I've talked a lot about, the analytic cube, okay? This notion of slicing and dicing the data, okay? And that really is, you know, uh, you know what what we've got going on now. We're going to open up. You know, we have our RSQL file open up, all right. And he gives us a task at the top of page six fifty six. I'm being very didactic here because this is critical for you to understand. Because now we're at the point where we're building the the data that we feed into our business intelligence system that feeds into the dashboard that we see. At the end of the day, a business intelligence approach says, I know what my KPIs are, my key performance indicator. I have a dashboard uh, that, is, that shows me how I'm doing, okay? And lets me, and if it's a really good system, it lets me predict how things will play out if I do certain things, okay? So it's not just simply a descriptive thing, but it can be prescriptive. And this is the same thing I talk about with everybody in, in the management science course that we use optimizer to say, okay, well, what if I change these variables? And, and I, in the exercises I give people, is if I change these variables, how does our transportation network work out, okay? So now we're in that we're we're working in that realm, and 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 we and this these are tools that are help us think like that. Okay, so page six fifty six, he talks about the task, and uh, he says for the for the launch on November sixteenth, two thousand eleven, list all the foods served, the quantities, the total price for each food, and who will be eating the lunches. Okay, this is over in chapter seventeen. And uh, this is the top of six, 656. The price increases will be in effect and 10 cents will be added to the price when the price increases null. List the following columns. Okay. Now, he shows you the Oracle SQL there at page 656. And we're not going to run it because it's Oracle. All right. But I do want you to note. All right, what's happening? They create or replace a view. They, they use table A, which is employees. They use table B, which is lunches, okay? They, have, they end up with a where clause, where IDs, and they link them up on, on the basis of employee IDs. And then they add an additional for the lunch date, okay? So they've created that one, okay? Then they create that SEC C 1701B view. So this is a second step, okay? So they have that view 1A, you'll notice that, and then they add that to the lunch items. And then they link again on what this time they link on lunch IDs. Okay. Then the third query they run, they build on that. And so you see, and then at the top of page 60, 657, you see that he combines yet another table. It is another select. So He's just, the, this whole idea is I just take, I create a view, okay? And I build on the view till I'm done, okay? And, I, and he shows you 
uh, there at the bottom of page 657, okay, the result table. Okay, and to get the, the total price, really all you have to do is just add in an expression and you've got it. But that's Oracle SQL. And as long as you see and you understand, we're just taking, we're creating a view and then we harvest that data and then we create and we combine that that view with the with a second harvest and then a third and then a fourth and and so we're stringing these tables together okay you'll notice he if you go into each of those it's bottom page 656 in the in in, in section 1701a he links the tables using employee id Okay, if you look at the second query there, he links them on the basis of lunch ID. Then the third table, he, he links them on the basis of two things, the supplier ID and the product code. Now, what's happening here is that we had a series of dimension tables Okay, then we had some fact tables that are out there, and we've taken primary keys and dimension tables, put them into fact tables. Okay, so now they become a foreign key, and then we can just combine all of them. And that's really all that's going on. But again, that's why we talk about this analytical queue. So just imagine we're just adding the we're adding corners that bind all this together. Okay, and that's really all that's going on. And you'll see the result table, okay, is a large fact table, i.e. a production. And it's really a production table because if you look at the bottom of page 657, if you had run all the code, all right, you would find that you wouldn't have the total price. So you'd have to get an expression, okay, that would give you the total price. Now, I'm doing a lot of lecture here for a very simple reason. In page 658, he joins several tables at once using a where clause, all right? And I want you to notice that, okay? Um, in fact, I think we're going to take a, we're, we're, let me see, I'm going to take a stab at 17.2, and I'm going to make some corrections to it, and let's see if it will work. So I'm going to get the NBL out of there, which is an Oracle, and I'm going to change that to the, the, the NZ function, meaning no nulls. And then uh, let's see here um, on the dates instead of the single quotes, I'm going to use pound signs. Okay, and let's. And close the date. And so we, we took the NVL in, in, in Oracle, NVL means no nulls. In Access, NZ is no nulls. And you notice in, in, in we changed the date from being surrounded by single quotes to pound signs. And as we've talked before, uh, dealing with dates and formatting dates is a nightmare. Well, let's see what happens. And I think we may be okay. And this would be 17 too. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click create. Query design. We'll close it off. We'll do the SQL. And let's see what happens. Ah, there we are. Nice, huh? So we just made, we tweaked it. Now, this is also, I also wanted you to see this so you can understand. 
that the differences between Oracle and SQL, uh, Oracle SQL, and Access SQL, or you could call it Microsoft SQL, are very, there, there's just not much difference, okay? The reason is, is that Oracle is a little bit ro more robust, and Oracle is written more, uh, Oracle SQL is written more like, well, its, it's interface is designed to act more like, to take that SQL and, and treat it more like a regular programming language. As, as opposed to Access or Microsoft SQL, it just says we're a data definition, we're a definitional uh, limited sub language, and that's all we are. Okay, so we've done 17 too. And I'm going to say this, we'll call this 17 2. And that's our output. Now, let's go down to the design view. And we'll see, we've got all these co all these that we've worked in here. There's the date criterion. There's that criterion that links the two tables up and the product code, okay? And the total price, now there's the total price operation right there. Total price is D price and we'll, Scrunchies all out so you can see them. Um, plus, no nulls on the price increase 0.01 times quantity. Now, let's look at this for a moment. I want to show you something. Look at first at table A. And this will help you understand what we're talking about when I talk about the analytical cube. All right. Here's employee ID, which is the primary key in table A. Employee ID is over here buried in table B as what we call a foreign key, all right? So we can easily combine these two tables. Now, we want to see if there's anything else that lets us combine these. And we have a manager ID, lunch date. We don't have anything, that, but the only the thing that matches these two is the employee ID. Now, we have table B and C, okay? Table B is the lunch ID plus a lunch date plus that employee ID, which is a foreign key, and then the date entered. Look at table C, and you'll see we have a lunch ID as a primary key and an item number as a primary key. Then we have the supplier ID, the product code, and the quantity. Supplier ID is a foreign key that's embedded from table D. Product code is a foreign key embedded from table D. Then we have menu item, description, price, and price increase. So you can see how we have linked these tables. We've linked them on the basis of dimensions, unique row dimension, unique records that really are about a dimension, employee, uh, the, the lunch, the item number, the supplier, and the product code. Okay, so now this ought, this ought to start to, to kind of settle into your brain when you when you hear me talk about the at the about the the, the the analytical cube, and this really should start to get you thinking. Okay, so all of these tools are designed to help me see my business in a more holistic fashion. Okay, to uh, and holistic, I mean. You can see past performance, and today with the cloud and high-speed computing, you can see current performance almost real time. And then with tools like Optimizer or Goal Seek or the Scenario Manager, you know, when you took Business 1123 with me, we used Goal Seek, we used a data table, we used a Scenario Manager. Those are things that say, okay, well, what if? And then, you know, if you're taking management science with me, or you do, 
then we'll talk about optimization. And that is, I'm either trying to maximize something, minimize it, or I have a target value. And I choose the, my decision variables. I choose what I call an objective function. That is what, I try to, what I'm trying to do. I choose my decision variables. I make a decision on what type of data am I dealing with. And I go from there. Okay, this is why when I tell you when you leave here and you've had these these BI, these BISS courses, you are far ahead of your contemporaries because you're understanding the multiple kinds of things that get involved with a transaction and the multiple kinds of things that feed into key performance indicators. And you start thinking about it. What is it that I need to know about my business every single day? What are the five measures I have? Okay. Or the three measures or whatever. Okay. Well, we've run this. We'll go back up here and take a look at the, uh, we've looked down here. We'll go down into SQL view. And we'll see when we see in our SQL. Okay. And we made a couple of changes. First of all, uh, we took the NVL out and inserted NV, pardon me, NZ for null data. And then on the date, uh, we, in, in, we enclosed it with pound signs rather than single parentheses. And, and then we strung all of those together. Now, here's, here's, here's the select piece of this. Okay. And then, and then the from statement is where we identify all the tables we're working with. Now you can see why it's much easier for us to do table A dot whatever. And then we introduce uh, table B. Well, pardon me, we've already, we've already identified it. And notice we, we, then we, then we notice the, the the uh, statements of equivalence, date, lunch ID, supplier, product code, and we order it by employee ID and description. And there we go. Okay, that's 17 too. Okay, so we're gonna close, we've got that done. That's a pretty complex one. Now, at the bottom of page 65, uh, pardon me, 659, we've got another issue, another, uh, another one of these, okay? And, we and this is gonna be 17.3. Let's go back in here to the text file and take a look at it. We'll go down here to 17.3. And you notice we're gonna have to do another little bit of adjustment. We're gonna get rid of the NVL and, and change that to NZ, which is acceptable. Uh, and uh, we're going to come out here to the date, and we're going to put pound signs instead of single quotes. Okay, and we're going to run this. Now, I want to show you something. This is a variation on a thing. We're going to get all this stuff and we identify the tables, and then notice what we, what we do right here. Notice this one line, we do an inner join. So we're combining tables, and then we take one table here, and we split it apart, and we rejoin it. We do an inner join, but with different looks of the variables. So literally what we're doing now is we're taking that data cube, we're taking that a cube from that, from that, from that, uh, a chunk or one piece section of that data, that, that analytic cube, and just kind of looking at it in some different dimensions. This is really not too different than when you go into a pivot table and you put a variable in columns to see what it looks like, and then you put it in a rows to see what it looks like. Okay? And, and the reason we do this is so we can find patterns in the data, okay? So we can see patterns. 
if you can understand that the kind of data, when you get a report of some type, always stop yourself and stop and ask yourself, what's the normal type of distribution of these data? Let me give you an example, okay? If, if we're talking about, say, housing sales versus interest rates, I'm gonna tell you right now that they're a linear trend, okay? When interest rates go up, housing sales go down. When interest rates go down, housing sales go up. So I understand that general concept, and understanding that general concept means I can, I, I can say, okay, well, what, what else out there has a linear trend? Now, there are other things that are concave and convex. Stock prices are concave and convex. The stock prices are actually, uh, you know, I know you're not all finance majors, but you, you'll take your, you'll have all had an introduction to finance course. I hope by this point you're headed towards one. Stock prices are more like uh, a wave. Okay, and if you don't believe me, you know, go over to like Yahoo Finance and choose a, a company and look at its stock, look at its one day, uh, what they call intra, intra day uh, uh, chart, then take the chart out six months and then expand it to a year and five years. And what you're gonna see is it looks like a wave. Okay, so it's concave and convex. All right, now you don't have to be super intelligent to understand this. You just have to think about it, and, and once you do, if you say, okay, all right, I'm dealing with stock prices that are like a wave. That means they go up and they go down, okay? Now, if I'm looking at data that are linear, okay, uh, housing sales versus interest rates, I, I know that can't continue forever. Okay, at a certain point it will stop. I just want to know, or I'll give you an example. Let's talk about marginal revenue. If you were to chart, okay, time on the y on the x axis and marginal revenue on the y axis, you will find that it looks like a, 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 a half of a circle headed up. Okay, like it, it, it's concave. And that's because marginal revenue comes up to a point and there's a point then when it begins to fall. Marginal costs are just the opposite. It looks like a cup on that same axis. And as marginal costs fall, they hit a point and then they start to increase. If you understand that, you'll know there's a sweet spot in terms of marginal revenue or marginal cost that I want to hit. Okay, so again, this is just data to help us see this. Well, we've uh, this is 17.3. We again we put in NZ, put these in, and, and we did we adapted this to access SQL. We'll copy this. Okay, and we'll get, create query design. Close it off. And there it is. And that's going to be 17.3. Okay. So we've we've worked with three or more tables. Now, if you want to see, let's look at 17.2 for a minute and let's go back to the design view. And you'll see we worked with four tables. How do you know? Well, there they are. Now, let's look at 17.3 and look at it, and we worked with four tables, and now we see something very interesting, okay? We're seeing how these tables are linked up. Notice this? Now, the one interesting thing is this table C, I'm gonna move it over here so we can really see the flow of these data. Now, A and B, you know, are together. C, you remember we did that inner join, I think on this, on this one. Uh, wait, pardon me, pardon me, I apologize. The inner join was on lunches B, 
okay? But, and, and so we created this, and notice this, I have one to many, one to many, a link and a link, feeding all into table C, okay? So th this is that. When we talk, you remember we talked about a uh, 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 database schema, okay? And we talked about a star versus a snowflake, okay? We've moved away from that. Now that we're dealing with production tables, okay, we're really looking at flows, and, and there we are, okay? So that's 17.3, we've done that one. And the author, author gives us some, some pointers about this, um, being careful with, with an inner join, being careful, and I'll over on page 660 and 661, um, careful with a left and right outer join. And he talks about full outer join preserves all the information. And he shows us 17, he's talking about 17, 17, uh, a full outer join of several tables. So you want to read those and, and take a look at them. Now, I'm at the, at the bottom of, of page 662, he gives us uh, a left outer join, and we do a and we do a step. Okay, and we save that. This is and then we flow. It flows on over to page six sixty three. We save that as is is section seventeen oh seven a underscore view. Okay. Then we do a full outer join. And you'll notice there in the middle page 663, that second step, you do a left outer join, then you do a union, okay? And then you do a right outer join. Okay? Now, let's go in here and look for that code. And uh, let's see how I find that. The step one, flyer joint, so we're going to select A, lunch ID, and okay, employee ID, and the union statement. So he doesn't give us all the code here. Yeah. He gives us he gives us some snippets of the code, but you know if you really feel that you need to 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 run it to understand it, you know be my guest. Make sure you enter everything, and so six sixty two, and then the top of six sixty three is all one query, and that's the one you say the seventeen oh seven a underscore view. Okay. And then you do the second step, and that's where you do the left outer join, then the union, then the right outer join, okay? Now, I'm not gonna burden you with writing all of that out, messing with it, okay? But I want you to understand it so you can see what happened, all right? We did a left outer join, and then we did a union and then a right outer join. Then the second step, we did another left outer join, then a union, and then a right outer join. We just repeated the process and we, we refined the data, okay? Now he, he talks, and now over the remainder of page 17, he talks more about the efficiency of your computer, saving information, uh, and, and try some ways of writing, uh, you know, uh, SQL, and he shows us some standardizing the ways that you join the tables, all right? And then as we get over into page 668, okay, he gives us some more of these. Now, I'm going to scroll down here and see 
if he's having a select day. Okay, so we're going to we're going to create this. Yeah, we're, let me walk you through it verbally because as you see it, and this is recorded to you, the bottom page six sixty eight. Okay, step one. Okay, we're going to create that section seventeen fourteen a underscore view. So we create a view. Okay, then in step two. Okay, we run some more code and we and and we save it as 1714 section 1714 B view okay so we've created we've created two views here okay and in the first one we use the employees and the departments in step one we use the employees and departments tables and step two Okay, uh, we used the the uh, we used that that seventeen fourteen a view as a table, and then we used the constants table. So we used a view of the and then a table. Then in step three. We uh, we use the lunches B and we use that we do the left outer join on on A that that first view we created and then left outer join on the lunches and you see we and and just step four and we create a view a D view and then in step five we create an E view okay then in step six. He's got that long at the bottom, at the bottom page 69 and the top of 670. And he's just joining or just building and combining and building and combining. That's all that's going on there. Okay. Now, I don't believe that, it, you know, it's going to kill you. It, will, it would kill you if you wanted to, to go ahead and input all of those, to, to run all of those. But that as long as you understand it you're good now here's the point when you're out working you're going to be working probably in a graphic user interface environment like this one and you'll have all the tables out there and you'll just you'll, you'll get a business request okay and you'll to to to, to run a, a business issue to run you'll have a need to run a run run query get some data and you'll do that okay it won't you won't you won't have to worry about writing the code is this a left outer join is this the right outer join because the 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 database administrator okay will have set all of that up so you can do those operations because right here literally you know we're putting the car together for all intents and purposes there's one the, the, now there's there's a piece of, of, of uh, lunches database 17 that chapter in the packet text really three pieces are exceptionally important first of all he talks about ad hoc reporting when you do when you do when you run queries on your business intelligence system when you when you when you run a daily report that's a periodic report it's a regular report then you'll get those what they call ad hoc where somebody says well tell us about what if this happened or that happened or give us a report about and and what they're really doing is they're taking look they're they're shifting in that analytical cube you remember how all those several little cubes are we're moving pieces around and taking a look at it this is not much different than when we're in a pivot table and we say, well, I've got this, this dimension or this variable up here in, in the columns. Let's put it in the rows and see what it looks like. Okay. Ad hoc reporting. Okay. Uh, is one that's what we call, what we call serendipitous, uh, serendipitous data mining. That's a real fancy way for saying your boss came and said, gee, I'm kind of interested. What about this and this and this? Okay. Now, if your if you if your whole system is put together, it's not really designed to do that.
But if it's, if it's put together well and it's robust, it will give you that data, okay? It will be up to you to see if it makes any sense, okay? And, and, and typically, if you are asked to run some kind of crazy report, then you get a whole bunch of records that have nulls in them. That tells you a lot about the query and a lot about the underlying data tables that are there. Okay, so be aware of that, all right? Ad hoc reporting is fine if you really have thought through what you're trying to look at. Now, over on page 671, the authors do a fantastic job, Patrick does a fantastic job of walking you through all the key points of chapter 17. This is where everything comes together, okay? All right, let me put this in, in an analogy of, of football or an analogy of baseball, okay? Now, in, 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 in sports like soccer or basketball, you have plays, but the flow is continuous. You know, you start kicking the ball and people are, or hockey is the same way. And there are every, but in football and baseball, you have very discrete plays. The offense comes up to the line of scrimmage, they execute a play. In baseball, the pitcher has the ball and he throws it to the batter. So these are, and in many ways, business is kind of like hockey and soccer, but, it, but, but for us, as we experience it, it's more like baseball or football. So if, you, if, you're, if you're the quarterback and you, and you come up to the line of scrimmage, the first thing you do is, is take a look to see what, what defense does it look like they're going to play. If I'm passing, are they, are they going to do a man-to-man -man in passing, or are they going to do zones? Are they going to blitz me? Have they overloaded one, one side of the, the line of scrimmage, the defense? These things get processed by these quarterbacks, boom, 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 and they study thousands of hours of film so they can see that. And their offensive coordinator and the quarterback's coach, they'll all sit down and say, okay, given the way that – and they'll look at game film. And they'll say, okay, and then here's what we should do. This is really in the many ways the same way that you'll be responding to things. In baseball, you know, the batter comes up there. The pitcher and the catcher know this player's tendencies. They have all kinds of statistics on people's batting. And so they'll throw pitches to them that they think they can't hit. Or, 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 or And if you've watched much baseball, you'll see a ball – and then it hits the dirt, and the guy swings, and he asks if what idiot, okay, would try to hit a ball that's hit, it's going to be in the ground. Well, what you have to understand is a professional baseball pitcher knows they are like a magician. They know how to take a ball and make it do funny things and trick you, okay? And the ball that looks like it's, you know, it, it's headed up, goes down, or it looks like it's going to curve, it goes to the outside, and that's why they miss them. Now, professional hitters start to watch film of that and they f figure that out. And what they will often do is they will swing to a spot, not even looking for the ball, because the pitcher will often disguise hit, hit, the delivery of the ball. It's, it's the same principle here. Okay? So you, this is a, a, the key thing is pattern recognition. Okay, and the analytical cube helps us do this. So this section about ad hoc reporting is quite good. And what the authors are saying to you is be wary of that because sometimes it may not tell you what you want. You, you need to think through that very carefully. Okay, the last piece uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, in page 672, he talks about he ends up with his key points, his major points, okay? And he gets us ready. Well, that's pretty much it. Now, now again, this is a pre-recorded screencast, okay? And so I'll, the, uh, the, the YouTube file, and I've, I think I've sent everybody an email, I've put an announcement. So 
you know, this is what you'll look at on uh, Tuesday the 24th, okay? And, uh, you know, and if we've not made up, if we've not done enough time, trust me, next th on Thursday, we will get a full, you know, 150 minutes in for the week. But I wanted to, as you said, we're not running a lot of queries like we did before. No, because we're up to the point where we're now more focusing on understanding than we are in just simply kind of getting comfortable with the language. We, we've done that, okay? Now we start to understand context, and we talk about that. Well, my friends, that is uh, SQL uh, 17, all right? Uh, a lunch is database 17 and you would want to upload it all right and uh and and have that done okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna close this off and uh that'll do it for us so i'm going to stop the share and i'll stop the recording